Shalom, brothers and sisters. All praises and honor and great glory goes to our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. Now, there are some brothers and sisters who are falling away from Yahusha, who indeed was prophesied throughout the Old Testament. There are false prophets on here, wolves in sheep's clothing, that are taking the hearts and minds and souls of Yah's children and handed them over to Hashatan. And this is going to be the first part of a series entitled The Messiah in the Old Testament. So y'all bear with me on this particular series. There is some confusion going on. And there's one key element that the Most High recently opened my eyes to where I myself was confused. But I knew that the answer was there and it was going to come. Long as I be patient and wait and not believe in all these false, false prophets and false apostles and wolves and sheep's clothing on here telling you that King David is your savior. King David is the one to come. King David is, and then they use that to disprove the scriptures in the New Testament. Or let's just say they disprove, disprove the testimonies of the New Testament, which bears witness of the old. To their own destruction, brothers and sisters. Here's the missing key element. I want y'all to think about this. Y'all know how Jacob is called Israel, right? Or Yashara. And I'm only saying Israel, even I know that's the wrong name, but that's in some of your Bibles right now. Some of you may not know the real name is Yashara, but anyway, Jacob, it was called Israel. And every time you hear the name Israel, who do you think about? You think about the 12 sons of Israel or Jacob. Now, I want you to think about all the places in like Psalms and Zechariah and Isaiah where it mentions Yahshua name or even Judah. Now, do when you think about Israel, do you always just think about Jacob alone? You know, Isaac's one son, Jacob, or do you think about everyone attached to him? which is the 12 sons and their descendants. Well, I know that y'all know this, so y'all think about the same thing I think about when I read Israel in the Bible or Judah. I know it's talking about, uh, either it's talking about all the 12 sons or it's talking about the Northern Kingdom. And when it talks about Judah, it's talking about the Southern Kingdom and everyone in that kingdom. Am I correct? Now, when it comes to King David, it's the same thing. You see, King David was, King David and his sons was promised the kingship. So everywhere it mentions David, King David, it's going to be also talking about his sons after him. This is the missing link in understanding. Brothers and sisters, and we're going to co cover this. This is um, 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 5. Ought you not to know that Yahweh, Elohim of Yashara, gave the kingdom over to Yashara, to David. I mean, the kingdom over Yashara to David forever. even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt. Do you understand? This is forever. The kingship will go through David forever. 
Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, is risen up and have rebelled against Yahweh. I mean, his master, where well, his master was King David at the time, but he rebelled against him. He didn't want to serve King David in his lineage like the father had said. So when he came back, he eventually set up the northern kingdom. And he's out of the tribe of Ephraim. Let's go check this out. That's in. Um... Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. This is Second Chronicles. Chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. And now we first go to First Kings chapter 11 and 26 to prove that. My bad. All right, let's go up to First Kings. Okay, okay, okay. Second Kings, First Kings at chapter 11. Go to chapter 11. Brothers and sisters, bear with me. All right. There's a lot of minds and hearts being stolen and taken to the lake of fire for this not having full understanding and not waiting on the full understanding. Verse 26, 11 and 26. Here we go. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite of Zerida, Solomon's servant, whose mother name was Zerua, a widow woman, when he lifted up his hand against the king. His, his mother's name, Zerida, she was called Zerua, which means leper, leprosy. She was a leper. Does that explain how the evil North Kingdom got started? It should. But anyway, he rebelled against the Most High in Ephrathite, and he took the kingdom of the, you know, of the north. All right, we just need to prove that right there. But do y'all understand that the same um, lingo or language when you're reading Israel throughout the Bible, you know it's talking about all the 12 sons, all the 12 sons of Yasharal, Jacob. Now the same thing is with King David and his sons because he was promised the kingship, him and his sons forever. The Most High would never change us. So when you go here to Ezekiel chapter 34 and 20, well, 23, you can finally have understanding. And I will set up one shepherd over them, one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahweh, will be their Elohim, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace that will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Promises of the Most High. Now we know King David wasn't perfect. He sinned with Bathsheba, right? Got it. Uriah the Hittite killed in his lust. In adulterous fornication. He killed. He sent Uriah to the front lines. And had him killed. He was not a perfect man. He could not be the perfect sacrifice. That's mentioned in these scriptures. But one was promised to come out of his lineage. King David's lineage. So everywhere you see my servant David, you now understand. It's the same thing with um, when it mentions Yasharal or Judah. You know, it's talking about all of them. It ain't just talking about that one son, Judah, or that one 
uh, uh, one son, Jacob, who was changed his name to Yahshua. And we, we need to drop down to 37 and 24 and 25. 37, 24, 25. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant. Now, when you say Jacob, you know it's not just talking about that one man. It's also talking about the 12 sons. Your mind instantly know what it's talking about because of understanding. You have understanding when it says Jacob, my servant. It's talking about the, uh, the children as well. But now you shall have understanding that when it says David, my servant, it's talking about the sons of David and all the kings that came down the line of Judah out of his loins. Right? And they shall dwell wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. You see the misunderstanding, brothers and sisters, that twisting minds and hearts and souls right into the lake of fire for lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Paul, Peter said in 2nd, um, uh, 2nd Peter's chapter 3, that not only do they wrestle with Paul's letters, but they wrestle with the other scriptures to their own destruction. I'm paraphrasing. Y'all can go read it though. They twist the other scriptures as well to their own destruction because not only the, they don't have understanding of Hamashiach, they don't have understanding of Paul either. And they also twist all the other scriptures before that to their own destruction. And this is what's happening in Zion right now. Let's go to um, Jeremiah. Chapter 23, Jeremiah 23, and verse 5, Behold, the days come, save Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. That means someone's coming on out of his lineage. They're going to be called the righteous branch. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. That wasn't King David, y'all. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Wait a minute. In King David's days, Judah was being, you know, what, pretty much conquered and attacked. And the Most High had many battles with all these other kings and nations around them. After King David's death, and Yahshua shall dwell safely when they got kicked out of their land. They never dwelt safely, did they? Soon as the kingdom separated from Solomon, the northern kingdom always had trouble. They didn't never dwell safely except for when the kingdom was under King David for a little time. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahweh. Our righteousness. Remember, this one's going to come in the name of the Most High. Just as we're giving his name. The same with him. Therefore, behold, the days come, save Yahweh, that they shall no more say, Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Yasharal. There it is again. It's letting you know it's talking about the children of Yasharal. But sometimes when it just says Yasharal, you know it's talking about the children. But this is being specific. The children of Yahshua are out of the land of Mizraim. But the but Yahweh liveth, which brought up 
and which led the seed of the house of Yashra out of the north country. This is a future event. This is when the two kingdoms shall be one. And from all countries, whither I had driven them, at that time of King David, they wasn't driven out to all countries yet. And they shall dwell in their own land. A little research can knock out all these wolves in sheep's clothing. Brothers and sisters, let's go to Isaiah 7. This is Isaiah 7, 14 through 16. Now keep in mind that if you throw out Hamashiach, you throw out the Most High because you're throwing out all the prophecies written throughout the New and Old Testament about his son that he said he would send, not us. Therefore, Yahweh himself shall give you a sign. You see, it's him, not men. It's the Most High who's given us a sign. He said this to Isaiah, to tell it to us. And there are people still don't believe him, but they still want to keep Yahweh's name on their lips and say they believe. You see what's happening? It's the same thing with all these religions that's out there with their own deities saying they believe they believe but denying his salvation is going to get you one way ticket to the lake of fire he further says behold a virgin shall conceive that means this will be a virgin and she will conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel which is which means Yah is with us butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Here's another prophecy that I want to show you. When this child is born, both the, both the northern country and the southern country, Yashara and Yehuda, would be forsaken of her kings. Now, we know that the northern kingdom was taken by the Assyrians. And then the southern kingdom was taken by the Babylonians, Chaldeans. And we never had a king ever since until the one the father said would come of the house of David, of his children, which Hamashiach is born into that lineage through Joseph. Though Joseph did not physically go up and marry, the Most High is able to have him birthed into the lineage of Joseph because he was married to Mary. And that's just the power of the Most High. Just as much as the Most High created Adam out of dirt, that, should have, that shouldn't be a problem for you to believe the Most High can do that overshadow Mary and, and uh, have him be born into the lineage of Judah that ain't nothing but a that ain't even an afterthought for the most high to do in his great power so you got to deny this here in Isaiah you got to deny Isaiah and you also have to deny who the next one we're going to Psalms 110. This is King David writing his Psalms 110 and 1. Yahweh said unto my master, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now, why is the Most High telling this guy oh, to sit by his right hand until he make all his enemies thy footstool? We're going to find out in Daniel's next. Yahweh, said, Yahweh shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Who is this rod of strength? The Most High's rod of strength. Who is he talking about to come? Well, we got to go all the way back this way to Daniel, y'all. To Daniel, the book of Daniel. Right after Ezekiel. Come on. There we go. 
And we're going to um, chapter 7 and verse 9. We're going to find out what the Most High gave this particular one who was talked about to come. Let's read it. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did set, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. This is the Most High right here, the ancient of days. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands upon thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand. Well, it says thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. Now, let's jump down right here to seven. Now, these events are, haven't come yet. Even this right here is coming. So we're looking for one that's to come at this particular time. In Daniel's time. 7 and 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Now, we're going to bear witness to this in the book of Enoch next. Everything you're reading right here is going to be witnessed in the book of Enoch. Now, this clouds of heaven means it came with the angels of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And what did the Most High give this son of man? And there was given him dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. This is the Most High telling you to do this, not us. He's given the commandment through many of his prophets. This is why we pay Hamashiach homage, because he's our king and he's our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. It's everlasting, y'all. He has an eternal kingship of the sons of David. He has an eternal priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, which shall not pass away in his kingdom, that which shall not be diminished. This is the most tired did this. They ain't got nothing to do with you. You don't have no say so in this. You shall not take away from the book or add to it. And there are many false prophets on there taking away this from the book that you may not see it when you even read over and glance by of it. You won't you won't comprehend it because you've been blinded by wickedness. Let's go bear witness to this in the book of Enoch. Chapter 46 and 1. And there I stood one. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. Didn't we see that right over here? Yep, right here. Right? Bearing witness. This is another witness. And with him there was another whose face had the appearance of a man. Wait a minute. And his face was full of grace like one of the holy angels. Wait a minute. This one was supposed to come with the new covenant of grace. Hold up. Wait, let's, let's just keep going. Well, let me stop right here for a minute. Full of grace. Okay, Moses spoke of one that was going to come like unto him. Him, you were here. Right? Moses said one was going to come like him. Now in Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, the Most High said, Behold, Moses, I have made you like as a God, and Aaron is your prophet. And Moses said one is going to come like unto me, because he was so close to the Most High. His face shone, shone. It shined. It had a glow. And through 
both of them, they perform mighty, mighty works, the mighty wrath of the Most High. And you got another one coming. It's going to have wrath in his hand as well. But the Most High going to be working through him too. Now, Moses came with the books of the law and judgments. Law, such commandments and judgments. Where you were instantly judged and punished on the spot. But one came full of grace that gave you a chance to repent and turn. That's why you're not dead right now. He came with grace. And here's an example of that story of um, that woman caught in adultery and the Pharisees and the people brought that woman before Hamashiach. And they was ready to stone her. Hamashiach, they asked her, what say you? You know, and Hamashiach said, let he who was out sin cast the first stone. And all of them had to drop their stones because they all was filled with sin. Grace was standing right there before them. Being grace. And they dropped all their stones and they left. And he looked up and said, where everybody went? She said, they left. Did they convict you? She said, no. Neither do I. Go and sin no more. There's your grace. There's your works of righteousness after it. There's your salvation. There's your works of righteousness. Go and sin no more. That means turn from those wicked, repent, confess and repent and turn from those wicked ways and walk in righteousness. There's your grace. This it's it's all in that one little piece right there. Explains what the Most High said would come in the future through all of his prophets. Let's read on. And I asked one of the holy angels who went with me and showed me all the secrets about that son of man, who he was and from where he was and why he went with the head of days. Why did he go with his head of days? Didn't it say they brought him before him? Yeah. And they brought him near before him. Let's go back. And he answered me and said to me, this is the son of man who has righteousness and with whom righteousness dwells. Didn't we read that in uh, in Isaiah? He would be called Yahweh, the righteous, Yahweh righteousness. Let's go back here. This is the son of man who has righteousness and with whom righteousness dwells. He will reveal all the treasures of that which is secret. For Yahweh of spirits has chosen him. And through a brightness his lot has surpassed all others. In front of Yahweh's spirits forever. So you know this ain't King David. And this son of man who you have seen will rouse the kings and the powerful from their resting places and the strong from their thrones and will loose the reins of the strong and will break the teeth of the sinners. You see this judgment was put in his hand to break the teeth of the sinners and he will cast down the kings from their thrones. Oh, wait a minute. Right here it says 7-11. I beheld then. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Up here, sorry. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And he will cast down the kings from their thrones and from their kingdoms. For they do not exalt him and do not praise him and do not humble, humbly acknowledge from where their kingdom was given to them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They don't exalt the Most High. They don't praise the Most High. They don't understand the Most High gave them their kingdoms. And he will cast down the faces of the strong and shame will fill them and darkness will be their dwelling and worms will be their resting place. You see, in the same sense, when it talks about the sons of the Most High, the Most High works through all of us, just as he works through all of his holy angels. 
and he uses the unrighteous in whatever capacity he want to use them and the uh, unrighteous angels as well to fulfill their work. He is master. He was the creator over all. All are from him. All, we're all in all, regardless of uh, if, if you think we're all separate from where we're all a part of him. Given the breath of life by him. It's just that you're going to go to one place or the other for eternity, either with him in, the, in his kingdom or with Hashatan and his unholy angels in the lake of fire forever. Let's read 46 and 6. And he will cast down the faces of the strong and shame will fill them and darkness will be their dwelling. We're reading Revelations as well right here and worms will be their resting place and other prophets we're reading right here and they will have no hope arising from their resting places for they do not exalt the name of Yahweh of spirits and these are they who judge the stars of heaven or the angels of heaven and raise their hands against the most high and trample upon the dry ground and dwell upon it and all their deeds show inequity in their power rest on their riches and their faith is in their gods their deities that they have made with their hands that they deny the name of Yahweh's spirits and they will be driven from the house of his congregation and of the faithful who depend on the name of Yahweh's spirits see it's the most high who set all this up this particular son of man he gave a king he gave him dominion glory a kingdom through the king king david's lineage that all people all people you hear that all people nations languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in this kingdom that which shall not be destroyed so who is this let's go to second estrus to cap this thing off Second Ezra chapter seven verse twenty seven And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils, the same shall see my wonders. For my son Yahusha shall be revealed with those that be with him, and shall rejoice them that remain four hundred years. After these years shall my son Hamashiach die, and all that have the breath of life. So we know there was persecution after of those apostles that was with him. And most of them died. Brothers and sisters, here little, there little. In just a short span of time, we done proved much today and there's so much more to cover so much more to cover and I'll be covering some more of this particular video the Messiah in the Old Testament in part 2 and we're going to get into more parts in the future. So get an understanding, brothers and sisters, before you latch yourselves onto these wolves in sheep's clothing, before you hear vain words, before you think that someone was sent from the Most High. Remember in Second. Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 and 15 says his ministers will be transformed into ministers of righteousness which means they will look like ministers they will preach the word like Hashatan did with Hamashiach he quoted scripture to him just because they can quote scripture don't mean a thing just because I quote scripture don't mean nothing I have to line up with the context of the 
scriptures that's before me, not my own agenda, and make it fit my agenda. That's what a lot of people are doing. They're making things fit their agendas of unholiness and unrighteousness and lies and deception that they may deceive you and bring you into the lake of fire with them because their spirit bears witness that they are on fire and they're dead. They're the walking dead. And so the dead gravitate to the dead. And that's why you see so many false prophets on there selling the word in audiobook form, selling the word on CD and DVD to you. Some selling group lessons for 150 bucks. You seeing t shirts being sold in ministries. Some of them have unisex categories on their t shirt websites that they sell in through their ministries. Unisex. Y'all know what that means? Have y'all not read in the laws that the most I said that a man should not wear what the woman wears? And a woman shall not wear what the man wears. Y'all see how quick Hashitan could throw in a little something and you'll never see it coming. He'll sneak it right in. Sleight of hand. Something real sneaky. And you won't see it because you don't know the Most High in his holy ways. That's why you ought to meditate on the scriptures night and day. Yourself at home. And call upon the Father. And the Holy Spirit that he has sent through his son to be in you to lead you into all truth and believe it and wait on it have patience you have to put the fruits of the spirit on and be patient and wait on it i waited a long time to get an understanding of uh, what it says in ezekiel and other places where it say my servant david and the most i opened my eyes just recently doing my purge out to exactly what that meant and to tie it in to what was said before now I have understanding I can't be deceived anymore by these false prophets and you'll be able to see more false prophets clearer now and you'll be able to unsub from them faster than Neo in the Matrix that button should be hot burning hot from all the people you're going to be unsubbing from. No matter how good they, how good you think they are. Oh, they blessed. Oh, this man is blessed. This woman is blessed. They from the most high. This husband and wife team, they're blessed. They from the most high. And they steady selling you the word. They selling you your oil. And it's not the oil of the most high. It's going to be some other oil. That the most high going to reject. Just like he killed them too for Offering a strange incense on this altar. You're going to come before the Most High with some strange oil. You're going to be put to death eternally. There's a lot of mass confusion on what the prophets look like. What, what would the teachers of the Most High look like? They'll look like the old. Go study the ones in the old. What they said, how they reacted, how they behaved. You will find them today if you go by that criteria. The old prophets don't go by someone just because they ooing and on you with some of the Gentiles records tying it in and making their videos all flashy and, and doing all this art magic, video art. Just like the world, don't be fooled and deceived into all of that. That's another way you're being fooled and tricked, deceived and oohed and odd and entertained by video magic of the world. It, it, it crossed right over into the Hebrew awakening. We're still an awakening people, man. That's not how the most high get down. He, he's not going to join Hollywood, join forces with Hollywood like our Hebrews are doing. Breaking down Hollywood movies saying they're a prophet. I'm just going over a few things here. For your edification. On the Most High wouldn't choose people like that. He doesn't choose children of fornication to preach his word. He doesn't choose children 
of adultery, the preacher's word. That's not, he's holy, y'all. He's holy, everyone. This is not how he gets down. He never sold the word. He gave it free 99, y'all. Anybody selling the word in a book written with their own words? Let me show you what Book of Enoch says real quick. Let's go to Enoch 103, 104 and 10. It says, and now I know this mystery that many sinners will alter and distort the words of truth and speak evil words and lie and concoct great fabrications and write books in their own words. Don't we see that with the Christian church? They write books with their own words about the book itself and sell it back to you when all that should be given freely. Now you see Hebrews doing the same thing. Steadily destroying themselves and you for lack of understanding and knowledge, brothers and sisters. They're selling uh, spoken words on Amazon of the Most High's book. They're selling it on audio files, CD, DVDs. This awakening is tainted and out of control and there's only a few people that's going to stick with the book by itself without all these heathen doctrines popping up in their channels. And that's what my what I'm reverting to right now is the raw word without all that mess. Now, I know we need some dictionaries and sometimes we're going to need strong concordance 